Here at Energy Media, we've been saying for quite a while that the future is electric. And that's the energy transition is all about the electrification of the global economy. And a lot of the focus when we're talking about electrification, when we're talking about the energy transition, is on supply. It's about, you know, uh, wind and solar replacing uh, coal and replacing oil and replacing gas. And I want to argue here uh, that that is not, shouldn't be our focus. Our focus should be on demand. It's not the devices, <clears throat> it's not the way we make energy, it's the way we use energy. And that's why we're going to, that's why the electrification of the global economy is well underway, driven by China. We'll get to that in a minute. And uh, there's a report out from the International Energy Agency called Electricity Mid-Year Update 2025. It's just the forecast uh, out to the end of, of 2026, but you can already see the trends. And so I want to, I've got three graphs from that report that I want to talk about. And we'll start with the year-on-year -year percentage change in global electri electricity demand and 1992 to 2026. And I'm going to read from the report for you. Global electricity demand is forecast to increase by an average annual 3.3% in 2025 and by 3.7% in 2026, a moderation from 4.4% in 2024, but still some of the highest growth rates observed over the last decade. Despite downside risks, strong demand increases from industries, air conditioning, and data centers, as well as significant strides in electrification, are expected to support growth in electricity used through 2026. And you can see it already that the um, uh, the four pillars of the of the economy when we're talking about uh, emissions and electrification are power sector, buildings, transportation, and industry. And already transportation is well on its way to being electrified. I mean, in, in China, uh, last year, just under 50% of all vehicles sold, it's the biggest auto market in the world, about 17 million. Uh, 50, uh, just under 50% were had a plug. And this year it's gonna be 55 to 60%. And by uh, 2030, the IEA thinks it'll be up around uh, 80 or 90%. So China is very rapidly uh, electrifying its uh, trans transportation sector, uh, but also now getting geared up for a, a big electrification of its buildings. And that's a major source of, of, uh, of fuel demand, energy demand. So <clears throat> we're gonna talk about changes in demand and if you look at the next graph that starts in uh, 2019 and that turquoise part of each one of those bars, that's China. I mean, the increase in demand uh, relative to other economies is nothing short of amazing. And they added, uh, talked about EVs already. Uh, consumption from EV public charging is up. Their infrastructure is vastly superior uh, to North America, but it, it's from from the first half of 2024 to the uh, first half of 2025, it's still increased by another 50%. Uh, heat pumps are, are coming on, but heat pumps are also starting to be used extensively in industry for creating uh, low to moderate uh, heat. Uh, and they're, you know, anywhere from two, three, four, five times, 500% uh, as efficient. And <clears throat> the, the uh, uh, Chinese government is... Uh, set to accelerate de deployment of heat pumps with the uh, new policy, policy initiatives. So a lot of this is being driven by, uh, by the uh, Chinese governments uh, because uh, there's a lot of work, a lot of uh, capital uh, freed up at the provincial and the, the local level as well as the national level. But China is all in. And already we're talking about China as the first electro state. So why would they do this? Well, first of all, I mean, there are geopolitical reasons for it in its competition with the U.S., but also I want to give you three other reasons that are economic. Uh, the first one is lower cost for many industries. So if you take an, an electric vehicle and the total cost of ownership for the last few years uh, is clearly uh, superior to an internal combustion engine. And uh, yes, the purchase price uh, may be higher, but the operating cost is so much lower that it's cheaper to do that. 
uh, cheaper for you to go with the, the EV. Uh, secondly, avoid carbon charges. Now, you know, the, uh, Europe has got a, a carbon border adjustment mechanism. Uh, Ch China itself is putting up a, uh, it, it, it's extending its industrial emitters carbon tax to other uh, sectors of the economy. So it'll have something similar uh, to what, uh, what Europe has. Uh, Canada looks like it's going to be keeping its industrial emitters. That's the trend. There are more and more countries that are applying uh, uh, carbon taxes or some kind of carbon pricing. So you avoid those if you electrify. Uh, superior performance. I, mean, and I have to say, you know, three years ago, we changed over our, uh, our furnace, uh, gas furnace, to a heat pump. Now we have heating and cooling. And the electricity costs, the extra cost, has been minimal. And far, far lower than the than the gas furnace, and and it just works better. Our house is much more comfortable. We're pleased as punched. And you talk to anybody who has an electric vehicle, uh, you know they uh, all rave about them. Well, maybe not all of them, but uh, I've driven a few, and uh, I far prefer. Can't wait till I get my EV. So there's a very good reason, there are good economic reasons for adopting, you know, the new demand, electric demand technologies like EVs and heat pumps. I mean, they just, they work better. Uh, so let's now talk about the supply side a little bit, because this is important. And if you look at this uh, graph, year on year, global change in electricity generation by source 2019 to 2026. And again, uh, it's all about... Uh, China. And here's something the Kingsmill Bond, who's now with Ember Energy, uh, said to me a couple of years ago with respect to renewables. He says, they're not going to take over right away, but first they're going to take all the growth. Then, then as they go down in price and uh, the efficiency and performance improves, then they'll start to eat into market share of, these, of the fossil fuels. And so uh, you can kind of see that in, you know, if you look at the, the, that graph, um, renewables by 2026, certainly by 2020, the late 2020s, they'll have all the growth. And solar is just expanding outside of North America at a terrific rate. So let me, again, read from the report for you. Renewables are poised to surpass coal-fired generation, depending on weather trends and economic developments, either as early as 2025 or 2026. As a result, coal share and total generation is set to drop below 33% for the first time in the last 100 years. Solar PV and wind energy are key drivers of this trend, with their combined share in global electricity generation expected to rise from 15% in 2024 to 17% this year and to above 19% in 2026, up from 4% a decade earlier. So you can see exactly what King's Mill said. It's, they are getting, they're getting better, cheaper, and taking up more and more market share. And by the way, uh, if you've seen our training course on the energy transition, if you if you're a regular watching our videos, you know that we uh, apply uh, energy transition technology adoption theory to our journalism uh, with a, you know as part of our journalism. We use an S curve, and the trend that we're seeing in electricity is exactly what you would expect when a new disruptive technology uh, reaches, uh, passes its inflection point and becomes competitive with the, the older technology, the existing technology. You know, it, the pace at which it displaces that technology accelerates over time. And that's exactly what we're seeing. So based on, you know, our understanding of how technologies diffuse into economies, we would expect that you know wind and solar renewables and on the demand side all of those uh, clean energy technologies are going to do nothing but accelerate uh, their sh accelerate growth of their market share particularly outside of north america so in conclusion the key to understanding the electrification of the global economy is not to focus on renewables it's to focus on demand because once you have a superior technology on the demand side, and again, EVs, heat pumps, 
would be the, the, two, uh, the two big ones. People want to adopt it. And once they adopt it, then they need more electricity. And I hate to say it, my, the, uh, my climate activist friends uh, are already mad at me because we don't talk about climate change and emissions at energy media, at least not very much. Um, but in the expansion of demand for electricity, you can expect that um, coal and gas are going to stick around for a lot longer than maybe you would like. And the, the uh, decarbonizing the global power sector at the same time you're expanding the, that power sector is a very, very onerous task. And frankly, I don't, I don't think it can be done. Um, maybe I'll be surprised and, and wind and solar will take up a bigger market share than we expected. But I think that we're going to have to reconcile ourselves to the fact that coal, particularly in Asia, Coal is going to be used because it's plentiful, domestic, and cheap. And uh, it'll be a while before renewables eat into that, uh, into the market share there. And But it's on the demand side that you will see the, the biggest changes. So that's my take on this report. And uh, the, uh, will, uh, the World Energy Outlook is coming this fall from the International Energy uh, Agency. And I'll, I'll have some things to say about that. Buy yourself a heat pump. Take my word for it.